So uh, our next speaker will be Philip. Um, this is um, from um, the, um, this is called Humorously Speaking. Um, it's a five to seven minute warm up your audience speech. Uh, it talks about the title of the uh, success for secrets of being a standout speaker. So uh, Philip. Toastmaster. Of all the introductions I've received, that was by far the most recent. This morning, uh, I just want to let you guys know, before I came here this morning, I told my wife I was delivering my first humorous speech today. And she said, whatever you do, don't try to be charming, witty, or intellectual. Just be yourself. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, honored guests, as well as our area governor, I recently heard a story about a Toastmasters member who was walking along and found a magic lantern. He rubbed the lantern, a genie came out and said, I have one wish left, just for you. The Toastmasters member, not being too creative, said, I would love to go to the International Conference in Kuala Lumpur this fall, but I don't like to fly and I hate boats. Could you build a highway from here to Malaysia? The genie says, are you nuts? Do you have any idea how impossible it would be to sink pilings in the Pacific Ocean or pour asphalt and concrete across 4,000 miles of highway? Or even how much trouble it would be to get an environmental impact release? The Toastmaster member says, okay, then just help me become a better speaker. The genie says, were you thinking of a one-lane highway or two? <laughs> Sometimes becoming a better speaker feels like that to us, especially when you're new to the game. And I am here today to share with you four top secret tips for how to become a better, standout, successful speaker. Tips you may never hear again, and these will take you far and keep people talking about you for years to come. Consider yourselves lucky. Step number one, tip number one, make a dazzling entrance. Have you ever been to a meeting where it's 11.55 a.m., all the agendas are set up, the lectern and banner are set up, the grammarian board is pre-printed and the Toastmaster starts right on time? I haven't either. The trouble of being punctual is that no one is there to appreciate it. So the first tip is to make sure you're always late. Okay, You don't want to be on time and be the only one there. You also don't want to be a couple minutes late with everybody else. You want to wait till the Toastmaster gets to the climactic moment of his opening and then open the door to awkward stares and a pregnant pause. That's drama, folks. That's what you want to do is create pizzazz and have people remember you for years to come. So tip number one is make a dazzling entrance because the early bird gets the worm, but the second mouse gets the cheese. Tip number two, when you are selected to be Toastmaster, or for some strange reason you volunteer for the role, treat the experience like a personal table topics. What do I mean by that? Well, Table Topics is all about impromptu speaking. Most Toastmasters take the advice that the organization gives them to prepare an opening, to look at the speakers and set them up for success by establishing their credibility and providing some bio about them. Throw that out the window. Even if you can't think of what to say, just come in, not having reviewed the agenda, and just start. And when you introduce the speakers, just say their name and title and throw them to the wolves. After all, how are people going to grow if they don't stand on their own two feet? So when you're Toastmaster, treat it as a personal table topics. Why are you guys laughing? You think this is funny? This is serious. Step number three, be positive and downplay the negativity. What do I mean by that? Well, imagine when you're the evaluator and somebody is speaking and they've given a flawless speech. Inevitably, you get to the question in your evaluation book that says, what could the speaker have done differently? and you rack your brain, and you think, and you think, and you can't think of anything, so you just make something up. Well, now put yourself in the shoes of the speaker. How many times have you given a flawless speech, and the evaluator comes up and says something that's an opportunity for improvement? These Debbie Downers are just trying to bring you down and make stuff up, and you shouldn't listen to them. So when you're done with your speech, and you get ready for the next one, do the same thing you did the last time, and you will be sure to stand out and be remembered. I have a bonus tip when you're speaking. If you're giving a persuasive speech and you can't convince them, just try to confuse them. Oscar Wilde once said, I am so clever that sometimes I don't understand a single word of what I am saying. <laughs> Sage advice. And the last secret tip to being a successful standout speaker 
keep it in the club. What do I mean by that? Well, Toastmasters is always telling us to take on all these different roles and activities. To be the Toastmaster, the General Evaluator, the Ah Counter, the Timer, to go to conferences, contests, and to network with others. Honestly, work is fine if it doesn't take up too much time. Okay? So just leave that for others and focus on the speeches. Birds of a feather flock together, but the more birds they are, the more they poop on your car. Okay? <laughs> so just keep that in mind. If you follow these four tips successfully, make a dazzling entrance, treat Toastmaster role as an advanced table topic, be positive and downplay the negativity, and keep it in the club, you will be sure to be remembered for years to come, and in fact, may have the most efficient brief tenure as a Toastmasters member ever. Mr. Toastmaster.